Hello and welcome friends. We have been discussing molecular cloning and some of the tools required for molecular cloning. One of the important aspects of molecular cloning or recombinant DNA technology is to isolate a gene of interest, insert it into a typical carrier which is a vector, allowing this vector to get inserted inside a host allowing the host to replicate and multiply so that your gene of interest multiplies along with it. If you are interested in expressing that vector in the host itself, like one of the best examples which we are going to see in next lectures is insulin, we call it as the expression vectors. But the most important tool which we consider for carrying the gene of interest intact is a vector and there are various types of vectors. In the previous lectures we saw plasmid as vectors, uh, bacteriophages as vectors. Now in this lecture I would like to enlighten on some other cloning vectors which are very popularly constructed, used and uh, being very efficiently employed for the purpose of molecular cloning. So today I will be talking about some around six vectors which are there in vogue in use and helping the recombinant DNA technologists or the genetic engineers to create newer varieties of recombinant DNA, newer chimeras and newer products which are beneficial for the mankind. One of the most important is cosmids which is there in your curriculum. The remaining I am just informing you or giving you information so that it will help you for your uh, further studies as well as competitive examinations. So those who are interested in the curriculum give more emphasis on cosmids and those who are interested in overall understanding of what these vectors is just take a look into the world, world of vectors which these genetic engineers have created. Remember these are not natural plasmids or natural vectors these are created in the laboratory. These are one of, this is one of the tools of molecular biology. So we will start with the quest that how do scientists make changes in the DNA. Scientists use their knowledge of the structure of DNA, the chemistry of DNA, the topology of DNA, molecules, how it changes its shape, size, etc. And with that knowledge they use different techniques to extract the DNA from the cells first then cut DNA into smaller pieces that is both the gene of interest as well as the vector DNA. They, it has to be cut into pieces then identify the sequences for this gel electrophoresis is used and the sequencing in the DNA that is base sequences in the DNA should be known that is very important and then once you have assembled all this you have to have a process where you can make unlimited copies of this DNA with genetic engineering, with recombinant DNA technology, with molecular cloning, biologists, microbiologists, biotechnologists, they can make changes in the DNA, the DNA code of the living organism which will give rise to newer varieties of life forms, newer varieties of plant forms, nutritious foods maybe and newer medicines which will not only make us uh, make us last live longer but also give us a healthy life. So these are the wonderful uh, avenues of recombinant DNA technology. So we have seen plasmid as vectors, we have seen phages as vectors. Now some of the hybrid uh, areas which the genetic engineers they have developed. Whenever some process is being worked on regularly, routinely, then the engineers they get newer ideas, newer avenues open in their brains so that, so that they can make more compatible uh, technology, more compatible vectors. So Cosmid is one such vector. What is Cosmid? Cosmid is uh, any type of carrier, any type of vector which has the cos site from the lambda phage. The most sophisticated type of lambda phage, lambda phage based vector is the Cosmid. Why? Because it utilizes only the cos site. Now if you see the uh, vector or the plasmid here, this is a typical cosmid, it will have a cos site attached into it finish. Only that much. Why? 
cosmids these are hybrids between a phage dna molecule and a bacterial plasmid and their design centers means a uh, plasmid is taken with a cos site and there is a underlying fact that the enzymes that pack the lambda dna molecules into the phage protein coat they need only cos sites means if you can see if you can read this enzymes that pack the lambda dna into the phage protein coat means packaging a head full of a dna into the lambda phage requires cos dna now you take only that much then create artificial heads artificial tails you take the cos site and design your own dna and attach the cos site in it so what will happen is that this gene of interest or the dna can now be introduced into the phage head due to this cos site what is the cos site it is a cohesive end sites which you have already seen so in vitro packing reaction with the lambda phage and the gene of interest it can be made possible not only with lambda phage but you can take any molecule which carries a cos site which is separated around 37 to 52 kilo bases of dna and this can be packed inside a phage head lambda phage head empty phage head so cosmid basically is a plasmid which carries a cos gene of the lambda phage now to identify whether this gene has which which has been inserted is really present in a viable functional form or not you need an additional antibiotic marker antibiotic markers whenever they are used in recombinant dna technology remember one thing these are used for selection selection of colonies on the plate just imagine if i have a restriction endonucleolytic cleavage site on the marker itself antibiotic marker itself and i insert the dna within the marker then that cells will become antibiotic sensitive and they can be tested by replica plating on antibiotic containing plates on the master plate those colonies which do not grow on the antibiotic containing plate you can say these are the recombinant cells or recombinant dna molecules so there is there is a selectable marker called as a ampicillin resistant or any antibiotic resistant marker or a gene and a plasmid of replication origin here you can see origin is always required that will help in creating multiple copies of your gene of interest okay and a plasmid origin of replication cosmids now these lack all the lambda genes except for origin and the cos site origin will help in replication and cos will help in packaging finish rest everything is artificial you create the phage head phage tails the ghost bodies they are artificially created in vitro packaging is done and now how to test these cells on the plates this cannot be tested with respect to plaques plaque is a character which is shown on a lawn of bacteria only if there is a lytic or lysogenic cycle now as these cosmids they do not contain any of the maturation genes they do not contain any head or tail formation we are using it from some other source artificially created in vitro it is synthesized we are using only cos site and we are using only the origin gene this will not give plaques so this has to be tested with respect of dyes various dyes like on a maconkey's agar neutral red is the dye then there is a methylene blue dye which is used for blue and white colonies which distinguish the recombinant cells from the non recombinant cells so this is cosmid as a vector now how a cloning experiment with a plasmid is sorry a cosmid is carried out it's just like that you can see a circular pjb8 cosmid is there cloning with pjb8 this is an example there are thousands of different cosmids this is one example a randomly chosen example there was no specific reason why i choose this as an example i just searched on the internet and i got this and found it simple for you to explain so this is a random example you can give any example or you can just say this is a circular cosmid so this cosmid got to have a, a antibiotic resistant marker a bacillus amyloliquefaciens h1 type of restriction endonucleolytic marker where it will be generated a cos site and a replication origin gene will also be there so when this is cut with restriction endonucleus bam h1 and you introduce your gene of interest you get a 
concatenane or a catenane that is cos resistant uh, ampicillin resistant marker your gene of interest repeated again cos ampicillin resistant marker and your gene of interest repeated again so this is a concatenane or a catenane where repeated structures are there now once you have a long length of repeated dna what is done these lambda phage particles are taken and head full of packaging is done means long length of concatenameric dna is packed inside the head fill and cut once it is full it is cut so you have end to end cutting and uh, this is this can be tested on ampicillin containing plates colonies containing circular recombinant pj88 molecules will grow circular will be ampicillin resistant and those which are containing your gene of interest they can be easily separated by replica plating so ligation is the process which forms catenanes now this provides the inserted dna a right size because head full of packaging no extra dna can be packed so each each phage head when it is packed with a head full of packaging it is ensured that each phage will have a same length of a dna okay and the cut is done at the cos site so the recombinant cosmids they mature as phage particles the lambda phages they are used to infect the host that is escherichia coli in the culture and here plaques are not formed because you don't have the rest of the lytic cycle uh, genes instead the cells they are plated onto a selective media and antibiotic resistant colonies they are grown all the colonies they are recombinant because as non linear linear non linear or linear recombinant plasmids they will grow non recombinant linear cosmids they are too small to be packed inside a lambda h head think again non recombinant linear cosmids they are too small to be packed inside a lambda head they will not be grown so whatever the colonies they grow all the colonies they are almost recombinants so this is how the recombination experiment is carried out in a cosmid so to be very simple if this uh, is somewhat heavy for you just think nothing any gene which can act as a plasmid plasmid is a extra chromosomal circular material and if it is introduced with a cos site and a ampicillin or any antibiotic resistant marker it becomes a cosmid because it is containing the cos site of a phage lambda phage so these are the basic features of a cosmid again here i have given pj b8 as a function which also can be replaced with a beta lactamase gene and uh, this is what the antibiotic resistance is now antibiotic resistant gene the beta lactamase gene or whatever you can say this is one any marker which helps it to provide resistance to antibiotics and this is the main gene which helps in selection selection on the on the basis of colonies formed on plates so the key features of a cosmid as there is a origin of replication gene now there is a cos site which provides a cut and blunt ends at the two uh, ends of the linear dna and there are at least couple of restriction endonucleolytic cleavage sites that is for eco r1 and sma1 so a cosmid with ampicillin resistant gene a polylinker site where you literally introduce your gene of interest a cos site this is what labels this vectors as cosmids and call e1 or origin site call e1 is a gene from another bacteria which is responsible for collision type of proteins that can also be synthesized so engineering different genes and creating a small circular entity which can carry your gene of interest till the end of replication cycles is called as a cosmid the second example is a phagmid now see the uh, what you can say fun in the names phagmid is coming from a m13 bacteriophage dna which is taken from a m13 bacteriophage it contains 1500 base pairs now this is called as a why it is called as a phagmid that is it contains the features of a plasmid as well as a phage it is created as a plasmid because the replication origin is taken from a plasmid now there is a selective marker which is usually antibiotic marker all are same even though if there is difference in the names names are just hybridized versions of 
the process or the physical features which, which these vectors carry so replication origin of a plasmid is there now one of the interesting aspects of phasmid is that there is a lac z gene there is a lac z gene means what is lac z that is for uh, from the lac operon it is chosen i p o z i p o z y and a that is you have the gene which is responsible for permeation of lactose so that these plasmids or these phasmids which are when introduced they can be regulated by iptg isopropyl thiogalactosidase now what is iptg iptg is a, a same molecule as that of lactose it is you can say a, a, just a prototype of lactose molecule means it resembles lactose but it will not undergo metabolism thus saving energy so the use of this lac gene allows these plasmids to be regulated by lactose or lactose like molecules like iptg okay and this is what the special features of phasmid is so it contains a replication origin gene it contains a promoter now as there is a lactose uh, gene it will contain a promoter then there is there are genes for coat protein and so on and so forth so multiple cloning sites are there so you can cut it with multiple restriction endonucleases and ampicillin resistant or any antibiotic resistant gene is there so these phasmids they are used as cloning vectors sequence vectors or expression vectors and it can be used to provide single or double stranded mat uh, dna material without any cloning so these are the advantages of phages using phages combined with plasmids which are called as phasmids this is one of the example of phasmid vector phasmid puc 118 and phasmid puc 119 puc university of california designed in these have you can see here a lac z gene is present at, at the initiating point in both these are fused and when these are fused you have a lac z gene at the left and in the right both m13 phage uh, origin of replication and sequences required for the packaging uh, of the phage coats are shown here all these are present this is 3.2 kilo basis in length there is a plasmid origin or replication origin gene there is a operator and a promoter adjacent to the lag gene so that is brought as it is that is i p o z so p o z they are bought so that now they at this operator and promoter you can control it with lactose or lactose molecules not only lactose molecules which are similar to lactose like i p t g or isopropyl thiogalactosidase so this is a polycloning region as you can see eco r1 sst kpn many types of restriction endonucleolytic cleavage sites are present in this small polycloning region so you can use these many types of restriction enzymes with different varieties of the ends which will match with your gene of interest and clone once you have this you can go on making this plasmid larger and larger depends upon the need and the aim and hypothesis of the researcher so this is a example of a phasmid vector it is a combination of puc 118 and puc 119 uh, features okay the next in the line is phosmids now simply if the escherichia coli f plasmid is used the based upon e coli is f plasmid a pili pilin protein these are called as phosmids they can insert now i will not go on repeating how these are constructed different engineers they go on constructing it at different levels now you have this e coli based bacterial f plasmid based vector which is designed so it will have a replication origin gene it will have a stuffer region here it will have a terminator region it will have all the essential features it will have multiple restriction endonucleolytic cleavage sites a polycloning polylinker now one of the feature of phosmid is that it can insert 40 kilobase pairs of dna fragment that is gene of interest 40 kb that is around 40000 base pair length of dna can be accommodated in this phosmid why it is called as a phosmid i repeat again because it contains some features of the f plasmid bacteria as f plasmid Phos uh, phosmids they offer higher stability because uh, they they 
are present in somewhat low copy number of the uh, replication cycle in the host means it is around one low copy number of plasmids are which replicate in one to ten number so this is limited to one number accommodates larger fragment of dna and offers higher stability because of its uh, low copy number characteristic feature high copy number of plasmids they become unstable during the cell division they get part they have to partition and uneven partition may put a pressure on the plasmid replication these phosmids they also contain other features similar to the plasmids cosmids like plasmids and cosmids like the replication origin gene and the polylinkers polylinkers are present which allow multiple cloning sites now the last point of discussion is artificial chromosome vectors artificial chromosomes are dna molecules which are assembled in the laboratory in vitro from very specific chosen components of genetic material from different sources from different constituents which why from different guaranteeing that there is a stable maintenance of this all genetic materials including the large dna components uh, with, with with the properties of natural chromosomes means how a natural chromosome is used you make a shorter version a smaller version of this large chromosomes artificial chromosomes now you see artificial dna now we are talking about artificial chromosomes the size compared to the artificial dna is larger in artificial chromosomes but still very 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 less as compared to the original natural chromosomes in the eukaryotic system so artificial chromosomes they are very useful for genome sequencing programs genetic map creation for functional characterization of the complete genomic regions and for transduction of large dna fragments into human and non-human mammalian cells means when we use cell line cultures uh, for recombinant dna technology this artificial chromosome vectors plays a very important role so we have three to four types of artificial chromosome vectors the bacterial artificial chromosomes yeast artificial chromosomes the p1 phage type of artificial chromosomes and human artificial chromosomes just let i will just introduce you this is nowhere i exhaust you matter on the artificial chromosomes i am just introducing you to this concept of artificial chromosome vectors so the first is bacterial artificial chromosomes now these artificial chromosomes they allow the cloning of large pieces of dna molecule just like our greed for ram in mobile is not stopping 1 gb ram 2 gb ram 3 gb ram 4 gb ram now we have 8 gb ram 12 gb ram i don't know why we need such much of speed just like this there is no end to the length of the gene of interest which needs to be inst uh, inserted the engineers they are interested in introducing larger and larger dna fragments and this has given rise to wonderful technology of genetic engineering utilizing bacterial artificial chromosomes these artificial chromosomes they allow cloning of large pieces of dna molecule there is a replication origin gene which allows the replication in bacteria there is a par gene this is pseudo autosomal region genes pseudo autosomal region as it is a chromosome material autosomes are those set of chromosomes which do not decide the sex of that organism so out of 22 pairs of chromosome the uh, 23rd is the autosomal chromosome which has no role in the uh, determination of sex but other creatures are there so this, this like that pseudo autosomal region genes par genes are present in the bacterial artificial chromosomes these par genes they help to segregate the bacterial artificial chromosomes evenly between daughter cells what is the role of these par genes when there is binary fission whatever may be the copy number of this plasmid when there is segregation when there is binary fission or even a eukaryotic cell when there is segregation equal number of these genes with your gene of interest they are segregated alongside the uh, vector or the uh, you can say when there is uh, actual time for protein synthesis now this thing can be seen in creation of dolly or eukaryotic systems where large chromosomes are used so par genes pseudo autosomal region genes they help to segregate the genes gene of interest and the vectors evenly between the daughter cells so lag z gene is also there which allows the uh, detection on 
certain techniques using as i said isopropyl thiogalactosidase and of course there is this orange colored uh, antibiotic resistant marker which allows the selection of transformed cells so the feature is large inserts can be introduced similarly there is yeast artificial chromosome which is also called as yac now the vector which contains uh, or which is gen created as yac has uh, several elements which is typical of a yeast chromosome now what are these as you can see there is a centromere sen c e n gene a yeast centromere which ensures that chromosome partitioning between two cells two daughter cells and a selective marker gene that is the distribution should be even then and then only there will be expression which will result into a cloned organism cloned animal maybe at the level of fusion zygotic induction so at that time uh, even partitioning between the two daughter cells is needed and that is done by sen or the centromeric gene then there is arsi yeast autonomously replicating sequence yeast autonomously replicating sequence it is called arsi there is yeast telomere tl now telomeres you know these are the uh, regions of the dna which give it a physical stability now yeast selectable markers such as u r a 3 and t r p 1 they are selective selectable markers which allow it to get identify on plating techniques so this is yeast artificial chromosome and it encompasses large dna fragments as compared to bacs now difference between bac and hac is that uh, the yac and bac is that yeast artificial chromosomes they can replicate inside a host and they are used to clone the dna sequences in the yeast cells dna sequences of any origin they can be cloned in the yeast cells usually what happens you see if you are trying to clone a prokaryotic gene in a eukaryotic system or vice versa there are certain limitations when it comes to protein synthesis because in bacteria it is a coupled process in the eukaryotes it is taking place separately to overcome these barriers we can use vectors such as yeast or yeast artificial chromosomes which is very helpful and uh, this was for the first time developed by burke and olson in 1987 that is yac in bacterial artificial chromosomes which are used as vectors these can replicate only inside a bacteria and these were developed in melsimon in 1992 the features of bac and I, uh, yac vectors is compared to any other vectors they can accommodate large dna fragments so finally human artificial chromosomes you can see this picture gives you a fair idea of how and why the human artificial chromosome is generated on the top of my head see here the red blinking cursor these human artificial chromosomes they utilize centromeres telomeres replication origin and selective genes as you can see selective genes from the human chromosome and they are artificially cultured and cultivated into human cells they are constructed by using minimum of the dna elements from the chromosome we have a lot of junk dna so we can encompass we can make it a compact but most efficient construction of minimum dna elements for the maintenance of chromosome function uh, but maximum expression of what we desired this enables the gene introduction of desired sequences and you see here you can this molecule we have taken a centromere we have taken a telomere you have taken replication i created a small chromosome this what is the size of this chromosome as compared to the original chromosome instead of 46 chromosomes the cell will have only cell could have 47 that is additional chromosome 47th being very small roughly 6 to 10 megabases as compared to 50 to 250 megabases of the natural chromosome these 6 to 10 megabases which are there these length of or these compact compactly created artificial chromosome now can encompass or carry larger dna fragments and can be very helpful in the recombinant dna technology ideally the researchers they could integrate different genes which are perf uh, which uh, they perform and a variety of functions which include the detection and uh, what you can say treatment of diseases now the construction methods of this hac they are there are currently two methods which are uh, 
uh, accepted for the creation of human artificial chromosomes one is the top down approach which is engineered chromosome and other is the bottom up approach where a completely artificial novel uh, hsc is created means in the top down approach you take a natural chromosome go on cutting the undesired parts and just as shown here take only the essential make it a compact size this is the top down approach the bottom up approach is start de novo something new all fresh nothing to do with the natural uh, chromosome everything is artificial here okay so the generated human artificial chromosomes they are 1 to 10 megabase pairs in size and megabases in size and they consist of multiple copies of the rearranged dna which are put into a systematic order so that that can be used for expression so this is all about the uh, vectors the various types of vectors finally once again we will see how much dna all these vectors can accommodate but before that i would like to throw some light on a very artificially developed vector called as pac or p1 derived artificial chromosome example i have given this is from one uh, private firm or a private company which has generated this this is called as pcypac2 according to the nomenclature depends upon the patent of the developer anyway this is a pac or a p1 phage derived artificial chromosome to overcome some of the problems associated with YAC systems that is yeast artificial chromosome systems this was developed this is derived from the DNA of a P1 phage and it is used to clone DNA fragments of E. coli okay PN, P1 bacteriophage has a very uh, unique feature that it has a larger genome than the lambda phage P1 bacteriophage genome is larger than the lambda phage and it can accommodate around 110 to 115 base pairs of the DNA it can exist in a coliphage in a prophage state this is important to be understood it has a low copy number of the uh, plasmid around some 1 to 10 vectors they have been designed with the essential replication components of the p1 incorporated into the plasmid now the insert capacity of this plasmid it ranges from 70 to 100 kilo bases think your gene of in interest which can be inserted can range from 70 kilo bases to 100 kilo bases these are very much similar to bacterial artificial chromosomes and uh, they are easy to manipulate the tra their transformation efficiency is much more higher than the yacs transformation efficiency means the capacity to introduce inside a host is more number within short and effortless time can be introduced and these pscs they are non chimeric means they uh, they are what you can say originally they are in a mode where the gene of interest has to be inserted to create into a chimera they are originally they are non chimeric in nature so this is the pac or the p1 derived artificial chromosome and one of the very efficient vectors as compared to the yac now let us see the gene of insert length and summary of vectors uh, how much they can carry the size of dna that a vector can carry it varies with the vector which is being used here in this slide kb means kilo base pairs which is, which is thousand base pairs and mb is mega base pairs which is around 10 lakh base pairs okay mega base pair is 10 lakh base pairs so you can see if you are using a standard small plasmid as a plasmid vector pbr322 or uh, similar plas uh, plasmids they can carry only 0 to 10 kilo bases of a dna if you are using lambda bacteriophage it can accommodate 0 to 23 kilo bases of a dna if you are using cosmid suddenly it increases it, uh, the length of gene of interest or the insert which is there uh, replacing the stuffer region that is 30 to 44 kilo base pairs of a dna can be accommodated in a cosmid on the other hand if you are using bacteriophage p1 then 70 to 100 kilo base of a dna can be used inside this uh, vector that is in toto and p1 artificial chromosome they can uh, now here when i am saying 130 to 150 kilo base it is the size of the dna which that vector can carry means it is apart from the 
original vector we are talking about the size of the insert so that is huge here 130 to 150 kilo base pairs in PAC and BAC maximum 300 kilo bases and yeast artificial chromosome 0.2 to 2 megabases the DNA size is there so this is all about the vectors different types of vectors there may be many more vectors coming up in the future with more potentials larger DNA fragments and better expression in minimal conditions so this is what our line of study is I hope you are understanding all these points and this makes it a very interesting tool for the recombinant DNA technologists or the genetic engineers in our next lecture we will be dealing with methods of gene transfer now once we have seen how the gene of interest is isolated how it is introduced in a vector how many types of vectors are there now we have to understand how this vector carrying your gene of interest has to be introduced inside a host where it will multiply these methods of gene transformation gene transfer into the host there are various methods four methods we will be seeing and that will be the part of our next lecture till then i hope you are understanding and i hope you are gradual level of understanding is increasing day by day that is what graduation is graduation is stepwise enhancement of your knowledge and aiming for higher understanding so that one day you can apply all your knowledge and wisdom into a product which will be benefit which will benefit the mankind so for that all the best happy studying good luck